Let's dive into web scraping and automation. We'll build an AI agent and workflow using Browser Act and N8N to automatically gather data from any website. Let's get started. Welcome, everyone. Getting started is super easy. You can jump right into your free trial just by signing in. And once you're in, you'll see a couple of options, agent and workflow. Let's begin by exploring the agent feature first. When you click on agent, the system will ask you for a name and a description. Feel free to name and describe your agent however you like. For this video, I'll be using News Tracer as our example. Now, when you hover your mouse over the agent you just created, a small pencil icon will appear. Clicking on this pencil lets you easily change the name and description whenever you need to. On the next page, your first task is to give your agent a clear set of instructions. For our example, we'll use this instruction. Gather news headlines from CNN.com. Next, you'll set up your browser search engine. This is where you can specify important details like the location, time intervals, and the maximum number of results you want. You'll need to configure your agent's settings. For smaller tasks, I highly recommend using the ChatGPT 4.1 mini option. You can also increase the temperature setting to add a bit more creativity to your AI. The run section is where you get to test out your new strategy. It's really simple. Just copy and paste the instructions you provided on the last page and watch as the AI brings them to life. You can also view a step-by-step -step breakdown of the process or even interact with the browser directly to take control yourself. This gives you complete flexibility to make sure everything is working just the way you want it to. Once you've had a chance to check the results and the output, you can mark the task as done. Simply click the Mark as Done button, and you're all set. Let's head back to the main page to explore the incredible possibilities of workflows. Just as we did with the agent, you can easily create a new workflow. Once it's ready, go ahead and click on the one you just made to get started. In your workflow, you'll see two nodes, Input Parameters and Start. For this example, we won't need the Input Parameters node. Inside the Start node, you'll find the browser settings, and you can easily change the location to whatever you'd like. For this news tracing project, we're going to use three essential nodes, Visit Page, Extract Data, and Output Data. In the Visit Page node, you'll define your target URL. For our project, that will be cnn.com. Next, you'll want to add an Extract Data node. This is where you tell the agent what information to look for on the page. Since we only need the news headlines, you will define that here. Finally, we'll use the Output Data node. Here, you get to choose the format for your data. You can set it to a JSON data structure to keep your extracted headlines neat and organized. To test the workflow, simply click on the Test button, then click Start. You'll see a live view of the workflow, the browser, and the output on your screen. On the right, you'll be able to see the working nodes in real time, giving you a clear view of each step. Once the process is finished, all of your data will be visible. You can even download it directly from the output section. When you've checked the data structure, it's ready to go for automation. Go back to the main page, copy workflow ID, then click on Integrations and API. Then click on API key and create a new key. A quick pro tip here. I highly recommend not using a single API key for all your workflows. This helps with security and keeps things organized. The workflow API section will give you all the instructions you need for connecting your API. The instructions for the base URL and authorization are given at the top. For our session today, we'll focus on using two key APIs, Run Task and Get Task. Each section contains the necessary data you need to correctly call the API. The workflow ID is the one we just copied from the workflow tab, and the URL is the extension to the base URL link. The method is post. For get task, the method is get, the URL is given, and the required parameter is a query named task ID, which we retrieve from the response of the run task API. With this ID, we can get the task data in a JSON format. Open up n8n.io. You can sign up for a free 14-day trial, or you can run it locally on your computer for free. I've created the workflow, and I'll walk you through it step by step. The first section belongs to the Run Task API, the first API we discussed earlier. Its job is to start the task and pass the task ID to the second section, which is responsible for the Get Task API. After that, we will convert the data, and then we can download it or directly send it to your content creator. Now, let's discuss the first section step-by-step step and see exactly how we handle those API requests. To send a request to the Browser Act platform, we'll need an HTTP request node. As I mentioned earlier, our first request is for run task. Let's check out the instructions. First, we need to add the API extension URL to the base URL. Do it the same way I created the complete URL for the node. 
After that, we need to set up the credentials. Choose Generic Credential, and for the type, select Bearer Token. Next, create a new credential and simply paste your API key into the token field. Don't forget to save it. You can use the same credential for your other requests too. Now, we need to fill out the API requirements. As you can see in the instructions, we have a required body named Workflow ID. So, in the HTTP node, simply switch the body on and set the content type to JSON. For the body, use the field below. Then, for the name, copy the exact name given in the document. And for the value, paste the workflow ID you copied from the workflow page. Make sure the method is the same as the document, and now we can test the node. As you can see, the API responded with the task ID we needed, but what if the connection is interrupted or the API doesn't respond? For that, we need to add a logical if method call. We have two conditions. The first is that the field named error does not exist, and the second is that the ID is not null. Null means the ID is not available or was not received in the response. If both of them are true, we can continue. But if even one of them isn't true, we'll go to the wait node. We'll wait for 20 seconds and then resend the request. The next HTTP node is for getting the task data with the task ID. Let's check the documentation one more time. As you can see, for the get task node, the main requirement is the query parameter named task ID. The method is get, and the URL is given. We'll create the complete URL the same way we did last time by attaching the base URL with the API path. The credential is the same, but this time, we'll switch the query parameter on. Then, select using field below. For the name, add the exact name given in the document, and for the value, simply drag and drop the ID from the JSON input on the left the same way I did it. Now, it's ready for the test. As you can see, the output is null. Why? Because we need to give the task time to complete. The status is currently created. So, if the data isn't there, we'll need to send the request again. That's where the if node comes in. We'll configure this node the same way we did the last one. This time, we don't want to see an error, and we want the status to be finished before we continue. You can drag and drop the input as we did in the HTTP node. Let's execute the if node. So, the status wasn't equal to finished, right? The if node will send a false signal and redirect us to the wait node. After a minute, we will try it again. Let's run the HTTP node to see if it's finished or not. This time it gave us a different response, but the data is still empty and the status is running. We still need to wait until the task is finished. On the if node, the status is still not equal to finished, so it will redirect us to the wait node again. Okay, I've waited enough time for the task to finish its job. Now we have the output. Let's examine the JSON. It contains an ID for the task and the output. Inside the output, we have the headlines, and in each headline, we have the news headline. If we execute the if node, because the status is equal to finished, it will return true. We'll let it flow to get out of the loop and continue to the next part. I use the JavaScript code. Let's break it down. First, I get the first member in the input list. Inside that member, I'll get the output key and then the string key. On the left, you can see that the input is a list. We get the first item, which is a JSON map containing an ID and an output. It also contains other keys, like the status we used earlier. The output is a map itself, and inside it is another key named string. That string then gives us a list of maps containing the news headlines. After that, we'll pass the list into the JavaScript array. The output has few items, and each one has a key named headline. In the next lines, we'll loop inside each item of the string list. Inside each one, we'll extract the data of the key named headline and add every single one to a new list of maps. This new list will hold the news headline data inside a map with a key named news title. With this method, we can have the headlines in a single line inside Microsoft Excel. It is completely obvious that the result shown on the right side is way cleaner and user-friendly. We converted that chaotic output into a clean one. In each map, we have a key named news title, and the value for that is the news headline we gathered from the CNN.com website. Now, let's add it to a CSV file. 
Add a convert to file node and connect it to the code in JavaScript node. Then, select Convert to CSV, and your file is ready. Now you can send this file to Telegram or X, or download it directly. The CSV file will look like this inside Microsoft Excel or another application that supports this format. We easily gathered all 92 headlines and put each one on a single line. This allows for further modification or for you to use this file in other programs or workflows. You can automatically send your data to other platforms by adding a new node, or even share it directly in Google Sheets. You can also create a loop to have the process run every few minutes. Thank you for watching.